getting started with Firefly is really easy. From FireflyReservations.com, you can uh, click the Start Now for Free button to take you to the uh, sign-up form. And you just need to enter your first and last name, email, and property to create an account. And that's going to take you right to the dashboard. And the first thing you're going to do is add your units and configure your property settings. And if I click the settings here, it's going to take us to the to the same spot. Um, we'll start with uh, the property, and here's where you're just going to enter your property name, um, your address, the the city, phone, website. Um, we're going to upload a logo, so we'll, we're going to add the uh, property information here, and then we're going to uh, upload our logo. And this is the logo that's going to appear on your reservation portal and on the guest portal, so that way everything is personalized to your property. Um, if I go to the reservations tab, this is where you can set up the, the reservation settings uh, for, for whenever a guest makes a new reservation. Uh, you'll see your guest portal link right here. So if you go to your website. This is a demo campground, but let's say this is your website. You just need to add a button that says book now or check availability or anything like that and just have that button point to this link because this is your personal reservation portal. It's going to have your logo and everything. Um, so that's where you can get your link. Uh, you can set your deposit. You know, you can do a dollar amount or percentage um, for you to collect money from the guest as soon as they make the reservation. You know how long the reservation is on hold. Uh, that just means the reservation, while the guest has it in their cart, nobody else can reserve during that time. Um, maximum days out that they can make a reservation, and you can set up your referral sources uh, so that way you can get an idea where your guests heard about you. And the last thing here is you can set up your own custom uh, reservation success message. So at the end of the reservation, whenever uh, th the guest has successfully completed their reservation, this will be the message that they see. So you, know, you can include these placeholders so you could say, thank you, guest first name for your reservation. That'll you know, substitute their real name so that way it's personalized. And you can make that say whatever you want. Um, payments. This is where you can connect with Stripe. So if you click the connect with Stripe button, it's going to take you to their website. Um, and this is where you can um, sign in with your existing account or you just go through here and fill out um, your business information. It's going to just be your address, phone number, all that good stuff. And then you're going to enter your bank account information so that any credit card transactions that you process, they can deposit into your bank account. So once you hit authorize, it's going to take you right back where we started and it's going to be green and it's going to say you're connected with Stripe. And that's all there is to it. It's really fast and it's a super easy way to be able to start accepting uh, credit card payments. And then these are just defaults for whenever you create new payments, but those can be changed later. Notifications, this is the email whenever a new reservation is made on the reservation portal. This is the email that's going to receive a, a notification saying, hey, there was a new reservation that was just made. So that way you can always be uh, up to date on when somebody makes a new reservation. That's the basic property settings. Um, hit save there. Um, and then we're, if you just go down the line here, um, add on items. These are just basic things like, like a late fee or, or something that you uh, might charge over and over again. You can add them here if you want, but you don't have to. You can always come back and do that. Um, amenities, this is where you know um, you, you can do things like 50 amp service. You can do 50 amp, we'll add it, and we'll say 30 amp. You can come through here and just add all of the amenities that apply to your property. Because um, when we set up the units, you'll need that. Um, email templates is where you can go edit any email template that is sent to a guest, um, like expiring credit card. You know, there's always going to be like default email templates set up. This is what the guest receives when their their uh, credit card's about to expire. But you can go edit the the font, the format. You can change all of that. Uh, the map is where you can set up your property uh, interactive map. 
you just need to upload an image of your map so we'll do that now and we'll select the map and it uploads uh, just that the, the map image and that, that can be like a, a an actual nice map of your property or it could even be like a Google Maps um, overview like satellite image of your part uh, you know doesn't matter but then uh, we go down here to uh, taxes and we can set up uh, any any taxes that apply at your property so if I do that oops, and I gotta add uh, 0.25% um, and you can even do other taxes you can have as many taxes as you want um, so then whenever we go set up the units you can apply these taxes to those units um, we forgot policies here um, your property policies you'll want to add those here because whenever a reservation is made through the guest portal this they'll have to accept your park policies before they can continue so you'll want to set those up and you can you know it doesn't have to be long just set up whatever you want um, and then units will be the last thing because we need to actually add all of your units to the property so we can just start with one unit and we're just gonna call this RV site one and this brings us to the home page of this RV site and uh, there's some defaults like the maximum capacity the max adults max children max pets um, and then the max capacity which is all of those combined so you can have 10 total of adults children and pets um, or you can also set up each individual one as well um, and then the number this is just helpful for ordering the units that in can include text so you could have you know unit one two three and then four a four b four c five six seven you can do that um, it's helpful uh, to to make them all the same digits so if it's uh, 1 through 20 you could do 0 1 0 2 0 3 that just helps it uh, sort nicer um, and in the description this can just be a nice RV site by the river um, this is can be your own description say you know add whatever you want it to say and then the unit type, if it's a lodging or a tent site or an RV site or an RV and tent site, if you can do, if that site can handle either. Um, if it's an RV site, you need to select the maximum length of the RV. Um, so if it's a smaller site and you know it's limited to smaller RVs, you can set that up here. And if it can only handle, you know, drive, uh, driver side slides or no slides, it's too small for any slides. You can set that up here. That way, whenever a guest reserves, they have to uh, specify the length and if they have slide outs, and this way you can limit uh, reservations to smaller RVs here. Um, and if it's uh, standard, ongoing, or all reservation types that you want to accept at this particular unit, um, you know, if you only want to allow short term people, when they know the arrival and departure date, then you would choose standard. If you only want to allow ongoing people, that's your, your your guess that they only know their arrival date, they're just going to pay monthly, and they're going to stay until they cancel. That's your ongoing. Or all means doesn't matter. Either one can stay at this site. And you can even choose to hide it from the reservation portal if you don't want people to reserve it for any short period of time. And so... Uh, the next thing we'll do is set up the rates and I'm gonna save those changes and the rates we need to add a new standard rate we'll just call this the standard daily rate and this is just the the default rate so 55 weekday 65 weekend and we're gonna make this good for this year actually we're gonna go further out you need to create a standard rate that goes at least one year into the future um, that way when people reserve you can't have missing uh, you know periods where you don't know what the rate is you need to go at least a year out and choose the maximum adults uh, children and pets that this rate applies so um, you know if if, uh, if somebody reserves and they have six adults well then uh, four is included in that rate but each extra adult over the four adults it would be five dollars extra um, so you know if you don't want to charge extra you don't have to you can crank this up or you know make the adult you can make the zero or you can you can charge extra 
So we do that. Special rates are your holiday rates. So we'll say the summer 2019 and we'll say this is, um, what do we charge, 55? So we'll say this one is uh, 65 a night during the summer with a 75 weekend rate. And this, we're just gonna make it apply from May 1st to October 1st of 2019. And we apply that. We're not gonna charge any extra. Hit save. So that's uh, that's the special rates. And, and you can have as many special rates as you want, like on top of the summer 2019, we might have the July 4th special. And this will do $85 a night and 95 So, And this we're only going to charge during July from the 3rd to the 6th. And once again, zeros. So you'll see there's a second special rate there. And this since this is a shorter time span, it's only three days versus this is a whole summer, the shortest special rate always gets highest priority. So in this case, this rate would apply um, over those other rates. If there's no special rates, then it always defaults back to a standard rate. So you're going to do this for daily, weekly, and monthly. So if somebody stays for just three days, it's going to be the daily rate. If somebody um, has an arrival to departure date is, is uh, two weeks, well then they're going to get the weekly rate. And if it's over a month, well then they get the monthly rate. So we're going to add the uh, the weekly and monthly rates really fast here. Alright, so now we got all of the uh, rates added, daily, weekly, and monthly. And now we can go and apply any taxes that we added earlier. We'll say this one, the logic tax applies. Uh, photos, we can add any photos here, just click to select. And we're going to choose um, these three pictures right here. And those shouldn't take long to upload. Now they're ready to go. And amenities, we can, from those amenities list we added earlier, we only added two, but you can add more. You'll want to choose the amenities that apply to, to that unit. And then we'll hit save. So that set up the first unit. So now, let's say you have 10 units that are identical to this. You can always just say clone unit and go 10 times or 20 times or however many identical units to this, you can just clone this. We'll just do a couple for now. And then once it's cloned, well then it'll let you know. And if we go back to the list of units, you'll see here's the other, other copies of units. So you'll just want to go in and update the name and probably the number, but everything else is going to be right. So you'll see the rates, they're all there, daily, weekly, monthly. So that way you only have to set everything up once as opposed to going and making those changes over and over again for, for all of your units. And also, if you make changes to one unit, uh, you can always just export those options as well. So, you know, let's say for this one we want to uh, go back over here and make a change to the rate here. Let's say we set that up too much. Let's go down to $75 and hit save. Well, now we want to update the other units, so you can just go Options, Import, Export, and you can either import changes into this unit or export changes from this to another unit. So we'll do Export, and we're going to export to all the other units, and we're going to export rates. You can do everything if you want, or just little parts and pieces if you make one change. In our case, we just changed the rates, so it's all we're going to do. Hit continue, and just like that, all the rates are changed. So if I go back to to another one, you'll see there's the rate, $75. And I go back to the other ones here, uh, $75. So that rate moved over. So that's all you have to do to set up all of your units. And once that's done, I'm going to go back to the map here. Um, we'll hit edit map, and I'm going to select a unit here. We're going to click each corner to, to surround it, and then you select which unit it is. So we'll say it's that one, hit save, and then hit finish editing map, and now you're done. That unit has been tagged to the map um, at that location. So now you're uh, ready to go and add a button to the web your website. Um, like I said, just add a button that takes you to... If you go to settings and you go to your property, go to reservations, here's your personal reservation portal link. So if I click it, it takes me right there. It's got my logo, it's got my information. And if I search, 
then here's your, your units. And you'll see here the slides aren't allowed, so um, they didn't work. But anyway, you're at this point you are ready to accept reservations.